Now, with a total of 2.4 billion U.S. dollars planned investment in Equatorial Guinea's oil and gas sector this year, Gabriel Mbaga Ubiang Lima, Minister of Mines and Hydrocarbons of Equatorial Guinea, joins me from our Johannesburg studio to discuss the state of affairs of the country's oil and gas sector. Thank you, Your Excellency, for taking the time out to join us today. Thank you for hosting me. Thank you. Uh, Equatorial Guinea's oil and gas sector is, uh, is being set to, is being called a success story. And we know that for this year, you have a number of investments in the pipeline and a number of, uh, a very strong interest from a number of investors. Uh, so, but we, what was announced last year was that in January this year, there would be new oil and gas exploration bidding rounds. Could you bring us up to speed on that? Well, first of all, the government of the Republic of Equatorial Guinea have decided to designate 2019 the energy year. We are going to um, uh, organize a couple, uh, couple of conferences. There will be one conference in April in which it will be all the Minister of Oil and Gas of Africa participating with the national company. In November, we will also organize the, fair, the first head of state of gas exporting countries. That, that will be at the city of Malabo. Uh, at the same time in April, we will officially launch our license round. And this is going to be our first license round that not only we will put on license exploration blocks, but also we will have a couple of uh, producing and, and developing blocks that they will have an interest. But also in April, it's going to be very special because we also will launch our first mineral license. We have decided that the energy should undertake not only the hydrocarbons, but also the mineral. Now, last year, it was also announced that the government may refuse to extend existing licenses to oil and gas uh, companies unless they collectively invest a minimum of $2 billion in the country. Is, does that still stand? Yes, it's a stand, and I'm very happy to say that uh, we have the cooperation of many of the companies in Equatorial Guinea. We have achieved the minimum of $2 billion of investment for this year. At this moment, we have a couple of new drilling platforms in Malabo, they're going to be drilling for companies like ExxonMobil. Um, they're going to be drilling five wells, ExxonMobil. Noble Energy will drill two additional wells. And then you have Cosmos Energy also drilling. And our policy has been to drill or to drop, meaning that we understood that for two years there was an economic um, uh, hardship for everybody because of the reduction of the oil price. And we understood that it was uh, the more reasonable thing to do was to give them extension and allow them to save some costs. But that uh, situation has changed. The economy is recovering. So now they have no excuse not to invest. And the best way of investing is drilling. We don't want companies to sit in the blocks. So we have been very clear, or you either drill or you return us back the blocks. And this is why in April we have acreage that the company has been sitting, not been able to drill. We've been able to do a lot of seismic information. So. The idea will be, and it has been that, if you want to continue working in Equatorial Guinea, you have to drill because you have enough information. And if you do not do that, then you return the, back the blocks to us so we can put it in license and bring new investors who will be willing to do that drilling. Because as an oil man that we all are, we know that you only know if you have oil and gas when you drill. Speaking about gas, we understand that there are also some activities uh, within the gas space. So share with us some of the lessons from your country's uh, gas monetization efforts. Well, uh, we do have an LNG plant that had been supplying gas to Asian countries. But one of the things that we have discovered, uh, again, that, that plant was very successful. We are very happy about the results. Uh, the offtake in Shell, the government of Equatorial Guinea, the participate Marathon, Marubeni, Mitsui. But we have decided that that resources is not only needed in Asia. We have African countries who also need that resources. So we have been working to see how we can be able to supply that LNG, not only to the Asian countries, but also to African countries. One of the things that we have done is that rather than keep talking about this, is to develop a project in our own country. In October of this year, we will commission our first small scale LNG in Equatorial Guinea that will supply LNG and gas to a cement plant and also a 30 megawatt plant in Equatorial Guinea. So if we achieve this, we will be uh, very happy to announce that Equatorial Guinea will be the first country in the Gulf of Guinea who have been able to produce LNG but also supply LNG 
to another location in its own country. So if we are able to do this, we will be able to supply that small scale LNG, not only to Equatorial Guinea, to our neighbors in Cameroon, to, uh, to Ghana, to Sierra Leone, these countries who definitely are already using diesel for generating of electricity and switching from diesel to LNG, it have a, a great save regarding cost. And that will be very good benefit for both the industry, but also for us because we will be able to find a new market that is, doesn't have to be the Asian market, but also could be the African market. What can you tell us about Russia's interest in your country's oil and gas sector and the kind of uh, investments that the country is willing to make right now? I think the Russia uh, industry and the Russian companies have a very important role to play. They have great uh, knowledge of the info and technology regarding gas utilization. They have a great uh, technology and information also on the gas transportation. And they are very keen on being able to share the, the experience that they have supplying gas to Europe. Uh, we do uh, are keen uh, to convince those Russian companies and Russian government that Europe is not the only market that needs gas. You have the huge mining industry, oil industry, and the growth of population of Africa. And we do believe that Africa requires gas. The same gas that Europeans require is also required in Africa. And I have to say that probably the Africans will pay a better price than the Europeans are paying for gas. So again, I encourage a lot of those Russian companies to look for those markets. We have markets like here in South Africa. We have markets in Morocco. We have market in Egypt, even though Egypt have already some gas discovery. But we do believe that Africa have a great market uh, regarding gas uh, use, um, rather than continue with the use of diesel that is more expensive and is more polluting. So again, I'm not saying that I don't like the diesel, but I do believe that if Africa can use more the gas, and this is through LNG or any other uh, resources, it will have a greater benefit because it will be cheaper, but at the same time it will be able to give us more benefit. Uh, I'll give you an example. A lot of the refineries in Africa, a lot of cement plant industry, if they switch from diesel to LNG and gas, they will be able to save a lot of the capital investment or even operating costs that they have. Okay. But at the same time, you can be able to use, rather than diesel for your boiler, you can use the gas. And it's more cleaner and actually for the environmental reason, is more preferable. But again, uh, you have countries like Nigeria, Equatorial Guinea, uh, Angola now, uh, Cameroon, or Egypt, who we have LNG. The biggest problem is that we cannot supply okay. to African brothers because they don't have the infrastructure. So it's very important to engage those African markets to convince them that they should put in place those terminals that rather than us sending that LNG to Asia and to other European countries, we should send it to the African countries to have a better benefit for them, not only for the population, but also for uh, their market and for the industry. Okay, Your Excellency, thank you so much for talking to us today. We appreciate your time on the show. Gabriel Mbaga, Obiang Lima, Minister of Mines and Hydrocarbons of Equatorial Guinea.